Hi, I'm Mike. I'm the founder of GoodBed.com. One of the questions we get on our website all the time is about latex. Uh, people hear about latex or maybe they come across it in their mattress search, uh, but it's not something that people, it's not a household name that they're familiar with coming into the process, like maybe memory foam or springs. Um, latex though is a, a very, um, has a lot of history in terms of the mattress industry and uh, has been used for decades as a mattress material. And in fact, a little known secret is that many, many people who are in the mattress industry sleep on latex. Uh, much, a much, much higher proportion of people in the industry sleep on latex than who are just in the population at large. Um, so we wanted to just give you a little bit of an overview of latex, what it is, and a few of its virtues, uh, and I'll also explain some of the different types of latex that you're likely to come across, because that terminology gets a little confusing. Just in terms of what latex is, um, latex is rubber, right? So it is actually made, uh, in some cases, from the sap of a rubber tree. Um, and, but however, it is turned into a foam. When it's used in mattresses, it's not like, don't think of it like a rubber bouncing ball. Think of it as like a rubberized foam or a foam rubber. Um, but it has that same sort of elasticity or elastic quality that rubber has, um, meaning that it's very quick to respond to your movements. We consider it to be kind of like the diametric opposite in mattress terms from memory foam, which is a very slow response uh, material. So uh, latex um, has, has a lot of, has like a real buoyancy to it. When you're lying on it, most people describe it as kind of having this sense of floating on the mattress, I think more so than other materials maybe provide. Um, it's a good pressure relieving material. We wouldn't classify it in general as being quite as good as memory foam, but it's, it's very good at, uh, at pressure relieving uh, memory foam being the kind of gold standard for pressure relief uh, because of the way it melts underneath you and kind of responds to everything from your pressure to your temperature. Um, so, but, but latex is also a very good pressure relieving material, but also better for support than memory foam. So it, um, it's more likely to be able to reach up and kind of support areas that um, are maybe like the, your, your concave areas, for example, your lumbar area when you're lying on your back um, is more likely to be well supported uh, on a layer of latex than on a layer of memory foam where the memory foam is going to have a tendency to kind of want to melt away underneath any kind of heat that it's sensing. Um, so. Those are a few things to know about latex. In terms of uh, the different types of latex, you're likely to hear terminology like Talalay and Dunlop. Um, and you may even, if you're really uh, digging into your research, hearing a term called continuous pour, um, which is sort of a slight variation on Dunlop. Uh, but basically, most people focus on Talalay and Dunlop. The difference there being that um, Essentially, talalay is a process, both of them are processes for making latex. They result in a slightly different type of latex. Um, talalay is a little bit more of an involved process, costs a little bit more as a result, um, but what they do in a sense is they take this, um, the wet form of the latex uh, foam, like when it's still just sort of the, the porridge, and they uh, basically vacuum seal it in a chamber, and then they expand it, like it, it expands to exactly fill the space inside that chamber. And then they flash freeze it before they vulcanize it. The result is that the latex particles in the resulting foam are incredibly evenly distributed through that block of latex. Okay, Dunlop works sort of similarly. They just take that porridge and they stick it in like, almost like a cake container with no lid, right? There's, or doesn't, you don't need to think of it as having a lid because basically it's just gonna bake like a cake. Um, so there's not gonna be the same kind of um, uniformity of the particles. In fact, what you're gonna see is that the heavier particles uh, are gonna settle more to the bottom of the Dunlop layer than, than the top. Um, and so in general, while with Talalay, you could take that block of foam and slice it up and you're gonna get you know, just absolutely uniform slices from top to bottom, with Dunlop, if you were to slice it, you'd have a denser, firmer uh, piece of latex here. And at the top, you slice off that top layer, it's gonna be a lighter, fluffier layer of latex. What does that mean to you? Um, well, really, what it, all it means is that with Talalay, you're gonna get a bit of a softer, you, you know, well, if you're looking for soft feel, you're gonna have better, Talalay manufactured latex has a 
more ability to achieve like a really soft feel through latex than, than a Dunlop process does. Um, so in terms of like people looking for that latex feel but with a really soft plush comfort layer, then you're generally gonna be a little bit better served on towel lay than on Dunlop. Um, Dunlop, however, is in a way has a lot of advantages as a support layer. Um, if you think about it, with the way that the particles settle, it gives it kind of a progressive resistance, right? As you press down on Dunlop latex, it's gonna press, as you press down more, it'll press back more. So because of the fact that it's getting denser, the further into it you get, kind of like a spring. You press down a little on a spring, it presses back a little. You press down a lot on a spring, it presses back a lot. Dunlop latex is more spring-like in that respect, which in a sense gives it an advantage from a support standpoint. It's not to say that towel lay is bad for support, but I think it's fair to say that Dunlop has some advantages when used in the support layer, just by the same token that towel lay has some advantages in the comfort layer. You can have a mattress that's great, made from all Dunlop or all towel lay. I'm only giving you just sort of the nuances of like <laughs> where there might be certain tiny advantages uh, to, to, to one way or the other. But I may have buried the lead here, but the cr true distinction that we think is actually more meaningful when it comes to latex is less about towel lay and Dunlop. And we really don't even focus on that at all. We focus on the degree to which it is natural versus synthetic, because we consider that to be the more meaningful distinction um, to most people. Because the distinction there is you have three types of latex. You have synthetic latex, which is actually a petroleum-based product, just like polyurethane foam, that is made to emulate the exact characteristics of latex. I mean, it is latex, it's just artificial, synthetic. Then on the other end of the spectrum, you have 100% natural latex, which is literally made from the sap of a rubber tree. They made that porridge from the sap of the rubber tree. And then in the middle, you have what they actually confusingly call natural latex, but if they don't call it all natural or 100% natural, they just call it natural, it means it's actually a natural blend. We on our website, goodbed.com, we always call it natural blend when we know it to be a blend, not natural because we think that's a misleading term. But you should know that when you're in a store or looking at a manufacturer's website, if they just call it natural, it means it's probably about 70% synthetic and only 30% actual sap from a rubber tree. Um, so those things we actually think have a pretty big distinction because for some people um, having natural materials is a really important criteria. So the difference between natural latex and synthetic latex yeah. makes it a world of difference to them. That's not to say it's gonna make a world of difference in terms of how it feels or how it performs over time. Um, but we think it's a meaningful distinction because of how important that particular criteria and preference for natural materials can be for some people. So. Those are some of the things that you wanna be thinking about when you're choosing latex um, and uh, just some terminology to be aware of as you're, as you're shopping for a latex mattress. Okay, so if you've gotten to this point in the video, congratulations because you now have your bachelor's in latex. Now we're gonna to go to grad school. And in grad school, we're gonna learn about the two things that you're most likely to come across in your deepest, wonkiest researching of latex mattresses. And that's ILD and density. The cool thing about ILD and density when it comes to latex is that they're very closely related. In fact, they're almost one and the same thing. I'll explain what I mean by that in a second, but after I explain what they are. In the case of ILD, this is a term that stands for indentation load deflection. Basically, it's a fancy way of saying how hard or soft is the latex. They measure indentation load deflection. This is true of any foam, not just latex by pressing down on it and seeing essentially how much force it takes to press it down a certain amount. And then they give that a number in terms of pounds, basically. Um, so with latex, if you're talking about um, ILD of maybe 15 or so, that's pretty soft. Um, if you're talking about ILD of 30 something, that's getting pretty hard um, or much, much, much harder. Um, and that's basically kind of how ILD works. Now, the reason I say that density and ILD are, are very similar when it comes to latex is because the way you control ILD with latex is how dense it is, which means effectively how much it weighs per cubic foot, how, how, much, how many latex particles are in there. So the more latex particles that are in there, 
the firmer it will be, the less softness, the less, the softer. And so basically density and ILD are kind of interchangeable when it comes to latex, which is very different from other foams where density and ILD are completely separate metrics. And density, you, you can have super soft foam that's very dense and you can have super firm and hard foam that is not at all dense. Um, but latex, that's kind of the key way that they control density. It's not exactly one for one, but it is that you can think of it as being very, very similar. So that's ILD and density. And now you've got your PhD in latex. Congratulations. Thank you.